Donc il est en résidence à la plateforme Intermedia, il vient de l'Université de Sava, il est compositeur électroacoustique. Il est là pendant 15 jours et puis il va nous présenter un peu son travail qu'il fait pendant 15 jours. Et puis on fait une petite pause avec un apéro étendu, on a des petits trucs. Et après on fait un petit concert avec lui. Alors, il faut parler anglais parce que sinon c'est le grec. Il est plus anglais, c'est mieux que le grec. Ça va aller loin. Si vous avez des difficultés avec des meubles, ça va, mais je suis en train de faire des difficultés. Uh, I studied in Corfu in Greece and then I did a master in PhD in England, specializing mostly in acoustic acoustic music. So thank you of course very much for being here. <laughs> I appreciate it a lot. I'm thankful to Jenny and Julian for inviting me here. Um, and what I came to do now is a performance uh, called Watery, which I'm gonna talk about it in a minute. And before that, um, I will play a bit of my music just to get an idea of what I usually do. And then I will show you what I plan to do here. Okay, so as I said, this, I mean, if you are interested, you can see like my website and my YouTube channel. I have uh, a lot of work there. And I have a real with the music, so. Okay, but I don't have a lot of time, 
I'm going to show you some live electronics, I think, for that. So, live music for dance. Then, again, uh, I also use reproductive music to compose music for installations, like uh, commissions to do work for installation. Uh, and I'll give you an example. That was a short musical introduction to what I do. And now I'm going to talk a bit about the project, okay? Yeah, that I came here to do. So, um, yeah, it's called Watering. And um, for two weeks, I'm going to be working in the performance. And also to convert the performance in a sound of installation, which is going to be a multi channel, so with a loudspeakers. And the, and the performance at the opening of the exhibition will be 22nd, 22nd Saturday. That's the portion of the event. Okay. So, how did this project start? Eh? Um, it is part of my life and practice, practice and, and I wanted to explore water sounds that I would produce live and capture in the hydrophone. And then I was invited from a different in the Science University of Technology to do a performance about nature and nature sound and so on and so forth. And the title of this conference workshop it was Empathy for Nature and Non Human Being. So, we're looking how empathy can help, how empathy is possible to help us develop words that are empathetic towards animals, birds, nature, trees, etc. And uh, it was organized by the University of Technology. Now, uh, this is a really bad recording, but just to get an idea how it was the, firm, the first performance of this uh, work. And so this project is 
just for you know just to, be, to know what it's all about. The aim to explore empathy, sustainability, relationship to the arts, and how to the environmental challenge. So as I was saying before, like thinking in the arts how by being empathetic to nature or to non-human agents like animals, etc., and trees and whatever, how can this um, maybe um, motivate us to make art that will address ecological problems? Okay, and then how uh, I think I can, you know, I can uh, convert this to a PDF and upload it to the to Facebook if you want to read it. Um, and then how then I thought of, okay, how can I make my project, how can I connect my project to these ideas of empathy and uh, maybe try, because I haven't tried this before, address an ecological problem through this work. And so there's a thing that, there's the, 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 it's called underwater sound pollution. So, it's a sound pollution that happens under, underwater. And many people, they don't really know about this. So, I thought that it might be a good idea to try to connect my work with, uh, with this idea of uh, underwater sound pollution. Um, and then, there was this, uh, the, the cost, is a European funding organization, etc. And within this organization, we you have know, the program Community for Care, which I'm part of, Julian and Jane are also part of this. And um, again, just a summary of what this uh, project is about. It's about advocating care for artists, artist organizations, and sharing our knowledge and technologies. Um, and so on and so forth. So part of that action was to organize residencies. And in these residencies, uh, besides being as opportunity to create and share what we do like what I do now, um, it's also important to share the working method, like for example, what are we doing here, to share that with other artists that it might help them to also get some ideas regarding on how for example, I connect these ecological problems to art to my work, or at least if I try, you know, if, if I can do this, if it works, because I'm not sure if it works yet. Um, but anyhow, so this is a tricky for care. Let's see, there's a lot of things. Um, and now, <laughs> artistic residence. Yeah, we did have the time to read them. Right? <laughs> but, <laughs> It's okay, I mean, I have, I have the website there if you, if you want to, <laughs> to look into it. Uh, but again, I guess you create a toolkit for care. And this toolkit for care, it will be documentation, it will be methodologies, articles, like uh, for people to study and maybe share how um, we can improve the creative industry, not industry, so the artistic organization, the artists, etc. So like if I share the way, uh, the, the methodology of my work, it might be helpful to some other artists. The, some organization, uh, like Julian and Jane organize, for example, residencies, they're going to help artists by inviting them over, giving them the opportunity to, to do some work. And then by sharing our experiences, somehow we create we care for each other. And now the artistic residency, uh, there was these things, hybrid journeys, uh, etc. And there was also this thing, care for nature and connectedness, which I, I found a connection with, since I, I was thinking of working with underwater sound pollution. And so therefore, as I said before, the idea was to create this surround like a great sound performance and try to water it and convert this into a surround sound installation. Um, the theme of this project is under water sound pollution and it's written in the of Paris pieces. Okay, and of course it's not only like in this particular project in the sense that I'm not going to imitate the voices of the animals or the soundscape of the underwater. I, I, 
I'm exploring the thing by caring for and connecting with the thing. So started thinking about how how do these creature feel like, like the waves, you know, that they hear all these noises and they get distracted and they lose communication and they have survival problems and feeling problems, etc. How this might impact my work if I try to empathize with them. Now, as I said, this comes usually from this workshop about empathy, so empathy is quite complicated thing, which is not supposed to is, is like being in the place of the non-human agent that is kind of suffering. So it's a very challenging thing to do. But as an idea, I sound fascinating like to think in how do these creatures feel with all these noise that come from the sheets, from the seismic surveys, uh, from the military exercises, etc. Okay. And by doing so I mean to examine how empathy towards and connection with the human agents can influence the content and aesthetics of the world. Okay. Now, uh, let's hear some examples. How does underwater sound? Okay. So there's this really nice um, library here from uh, the, the British Library actually. And they gather some really amazing uh, underwater recording from some really exceptional uh, field recordings. Uh, but they have some really, really nice recordings. So, uh, and here. Oh, 
and solar of course. So you are saying this is the pollution, right? Yeah, this is the noise of the sound. This is the sound pollution. Yeah, the sound pollution. Pardon, I think there are many other sources, but this is the ones I this is these are the recording that I find. Um, And yeah, under the sound pollution, as you can see, military ships, sonar, fishing boats, seismic surveys, etc., high diving, low flag airplane, ship traffic, and so on and so forth. Now, um, this is a picture from my country, actually, in Cyprus. This is me, like 10 or the, the 12 waves of fountain. And the first, the first we said that it was uh, from, from the air earthquake, so happened in Turkey. But then the more special, special organizations, which are specialists in, in marine life, they said that they probably died because of the military exercises Russia was doing at that time with uh, submarines and sonar and uh, uh, underwater bombs and missiles and so um, so some of these new types can be interpreted and explored the marine environment and to the island community in each other. And a phonogenic noise, negative the effects on the animals by reducing their hearing ability and causing them to be able to change and in extreme cases survival. And, and of course it's produced by sheep, by sonar, by synthetic sound, uh, construction, construction, and seismic surface. And now, like, this is the last, uh, about some provision, the last slide, about some provision. Now, uh, there is this very recent paper to Arten on that they, this team of people evaluated actually 548 studies dealing with data from the noise. Okay, and they did that related to the evaluation, okay, it's a young trend, but they did that, um, in the confidence scale of the uh, improvement in panel of climate change, and the exact how strong are the evidence supporting the impact of other water for the in my life. Okay. And high confidence, they have high confidence that the project is not in the reality of the climate. So actually why they do it is they do this so they they can uh, convince uh, the people in the governments and that, that, that deal with the regulations and tell them, look, this is a real problem, okay? We did this research, we studied all these uh, research papers, and we found that there's a high confidence that there is a problem, you know, you cannot ignore it. Because until now, like, the, of course, the, the first uh, problem in ocean pollution is plastic, is toxic fluids that are thrown into the sea, etc. And the, and, and the, the, the people that are responsible for regulating these things, they wouldn't recognize, you know, that sound, underwater sound pollution is a problem. Because they didn't have enough evidence that show that indeed underwater sound pollution impacts marine animals. And so these people, in this paper that was published in Science Magazine, kind of proved that. And now using this evidence, the researchers believe that they can convince the high level panel for a sustainable ocean to officially acknowledge sound pollution as a likely substantial contributor to the decline in studies and ecosystems. Okay. And if they manage to convince them, it's not that they're going to start the whole traffic, etc. But there's another reason showing that by taking some measures, by, for example, by putting acoustic curtains around gas um, extraction, etc., by modifying the propellants of the ships. Uh, so on and so forth, they can, they can um, lower the volume of noise significantly and that will benefit a lot the marine life and the ocean ecosystem. Okay. And as I said, yeah, this will have, uh, put pressure on policy makers to create regulations. So for example, they could make some ships 
some companies already doing this, but they could, it could be regulated that ships make specific adjustments to the problem so that uh, it produces less noise. Okay, and now here we come to the residency. This is where I was in my residency. Um, and as you, as you can see, I started by setting up a multi channel thing, multi channel setup. Um, and now I'm going to the artistic part. Okay, this is the artistic methodology of the, the way I work. So, what I proposed was to work on this performance condition, which was like the performance of my age, like discovering the sounds I can produce within this glass bowl with a straw, the water, capturing that through a hydro bowl and processing them, and see musically what, what I can do with these things. Another performance condition is becoming the voice of a young human age, and that, that I think is very specific. But imagine, like, you know, or, in, or being motivated or influenced from the sounds and the way it's put the scene producing center. And then the third one was the performance becoming the sounds, like, uh, making sounds like you are the soundscape, like removing this idea of human nature and try to produce something that feels like a sound environment, like a sound. And then uh, the soundscape perform, uh, like exploring these recordings, underwater recordings, and then the idea of the soundscape without the performer. But these last two, it seems that. Um, they might not work at the moment. Uh, yeah. Because it's like we are now concentrated on the sounds that are produced live through this object in the water in the hydrophone. So for the time being I, I cannot really find a way to connect these sounds, but it might come in the next few days and um, and actually, this is the official presentation. And before closing, and then we have a September discussion, before closing, um, I will show a recording I did yesterday. Just so to get an idea of what I'm doing.
Well, you're always interested in water, or is it because of this performance that you had to get interested to it? Um, no, actually, I've been using water quite a lot of things. I started like composing and producing music, like water, it was like almost there. Hey, always there. Like, uh, I used a lot of time recordings of the sea, uh, but not so much about water recordings. And the water recording is something new, but the water, yeah. <coughs> I find that it's a sound that I really love and I use quite a bit. Yeah. I was just thinking about um, about lava. Yeah. And uh, even though it's not water, um, what it would be like to to have the the sounds of lava in our rock. Yeah. That would be interesting. Discover and yeah. then actually water because it flows mm. with a very different purpose. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if there are field recordings that they have recorded lava. Maybe they are not some, but yeah, sure. They are not. Yeah. And then I guess the second thing that came to mind was during the residency, were there opportunities to collaborate with other types of artists who you could who maybe you've already worked with, but I can imagine these sounds uh, being used as a landscape for other industrial artists. Mm -hmm. um, it be the visual artists, yeah. or I don't know if you uh, can comment. Yeah, that would have <laughs> yeah, been amazing. Right? <laughs> uh, it, 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 you, know, you know how you do residency, so uh, it was just for one person this residency, but yeah, I mean, I would love to to collaborate with uh, visual artists because, as you see uh, here, for example, the visuals, uh, because this performance took place at the university, uh, there is this amazing guy uh, that does visuals and he used four projectors and he did some mapping and he, he programmed so that the sounds would trigger things. Uh, in the Are you going to work also on the um, pollutions uh, in, around the water here, or will you just concentrate on the performance? Or um, yeah, I think I think I'm going to concentrate on the performance now because hmm. uh, yeah, it could be also like thinking about uh, the area, but because it's two weeks. Hmm. <laughs> And there's already too many challenges that they, yeah, I'm going to concentrate uh, on the line element now, I think. Uh, because also that is like, uh, with, with the, in the multi-channel, it becomes a bit complicated to play and diffuse the sound around. So, uh, yeah, that's a kind of challenge that I'm facing now. And hopefully, I will find ways to work with that. Um, Oh yeah, it's a good idea. I mean, like going to a place and uh, recording the sound of the rivers of the sea when you go for the residency and using that. Yeah, that would be amazing. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Mm. And also one one important question that I have, and I personally. You know, find it very difficult, as I said before, it's like empathizing like with these pieces, like what does it really mean? You know, because you do the research, you kind of understand what's going on, 
that all these sounds affect the navigation, the survival, the communication, uh, that these the creatures are the problems, feeding, etc., mating. And you know, you do this research and you get to know all these things and then you get to listen to these recordings and what sounds they produce. But then it's really open on how this impacted the performance, you know. Because if there is no dramaturgy, like if there is no dramaturgy that, yeah, now I'm, for example, responding to the noise, whatever, or now I'm responding to the communication breakdown, or now I'm responding to this. Uh, which, yeah, I find very difficult to do, actually. So, uh, it's something that I need to elaborate to think about, like what is, what does it mean really to be empathetic towards this aquatic species, this marine life that is threatened from the sound pollution? Yeah. Mm. No, I'm saying that because uh, I, we've been recording uh, hydrophones uh, around a lot, and then uh, one time I was recording a uh, sound in Oslo port and then it was really obvious that the, the port was totally, the sound of the port was no animals, was dead yeah. and you could only hear the machine and the foraging and, and the boat and, and then in some other place you could hear fish and life uh, in Marseille for example and, then, and in different places and it's just, it's not, it's, you, it may be true, it's not that interesting mm -hmm. in terms of sound yeah. But it's dead in terms of animals, it's machine. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's always could be interesting, but mm -hmm. you could end up, uh, when I record there, uh, sometimes the uh, air or some other river here, it's not necessarily interesting. It might be nothing, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Depends the time of year. Mm -hmm. There's also the season, yeah. The season.
on s'est retenu quand même. Ah, oui, oui. On s'est retenu un peu quoi. Parce qu'on s'est dit, aïe, Oups, ça... putain, un QG de table. Alors, Facebook, c'est impraticable.